Okay, so we have brought in our additional terrain assets, and I've closed up all of the folders. So you see we have our standard assets, which already had a terrain assets folder inside of it. And then we also, outside of standard assets, have another terrain assets folder. Now, if you wanted to condense those two down, you could really, but I kind of like having them separate because we can see which ones were downloaded and were separate from the standard assets that we had before. But it's really just a matter of personal preference. So our next step is to create the procedural texture that will automatically cover all of our terrain. And we can get pretty in-depth with this. We can have a, uh, a texture which automatically takes into account the angle of all of the slopes of our terrain and applies cliff textures where things get a little bit too steep. Uh, we can, as at the same time, while we do that, we can also have different uh, textures be visible at various elevations. Now, I'm not going to be utilizing all of that. As a matter of fact, all I'm really interested in is a base texture and a cliff texture. Because uh, there's, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have a great variety of different elevations here. This level that I'm building is just going to be a snowy area with some rocky cliffs just to keep things visually interesting. So let's select our terrain. And then we're going to come down to the terrain toolkit, which is currently closed up. So uh, let's take the terrain base object for now and we'll just we'll close it for the time being. And we'll close up the terrain collider and we'll re-expand the terrain toolkit just so that things are nicely you know, up here where we can see them. And we're going to switch over to texture mode. Now, it starts off by warning you that no textures have been assigned and that you need to add a texture. It does this in red so it's nice and painfully obvious. We're going to click on the add texture button and we get a texture. It's the most awesome beautiful texture ever. So if I was to zoom in here, it's a great big checkerboard pattern and all over it, it says add a terrain texture. So <laughs> you're not going to accidentally forget. Now, uh, let's take a look at what just happened. We did get a texture. It's a copy of this really funky checkerboard and notice where it's placed. It says cliff texture. This is the lowest level texture you can add is what's going to be visible on your cliffs. Now we can change this. Obviously we don't want to keep the checkerboard, so there's a little tiny select button here on the thumbnail for it. We're going to click that, and this will give us all of the various textures we have access to, which has been expanded pretty significantly now that we've added in those additional terrain assets from the previous video. We have a cliff texture here called Cliff Layered Rock, and that's the one that I think we're going to use. So let's just go ahead and double click on that. And that immediately gets added in. Now I'm going to use Alt and right mouse and kind of zoom away. And you'll see that it repeats quite a lot. And we'll take a look at how we can fix that a little bit later. For now, we don't really need to worry about it. The good news is we do have a base texture down, which already looks a lot better than having everything just a flat white. Now we also want to have a layer of snow, which is going to be applied to all of the surfaces depending on the angle of the surface. So really steep things will still have a bit of the cliff face showing, and then areas that start to level off, it's going to start blending into snow. And how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. We just need to add another texture. So we'll click Add Texture, and it creates one for us, but it's a little... Okay, I'm not complaining, but it can be a little hard to see if you're not used to the interface for uh, the Terrain Toolkit. We have it right here. It just says Default, and there's a little tiny circle right next to it. It just kind of magically appeared out of nowhere. Now, we could click on the little X next to it and delete it. So let me add one back in. So click Add Texture, and you see it pop in right there. Now, if we click on that tiny little circle, it brings our Load Texture window back in. So now we can choose our next texture. And coming in with our Terrain Asset package that we just loaded in the previous video, we have Snow. So we'll double-click Snow. And there we go. In fact, I think I ended up nuking out all of my textures. So there's snow in texture one, and we need to put our cliff texture back. So I'll click on the select button here and double click on my cliff layers. Now you might be wondering, well, I just added snow and I have my cliff. So why don't I see the difference? Because we need to apply the procedural texture. Now you're probably wondering, how do we apply the procedural texture? I know I'm wondering, because I'm sure it couldn't have anything to do with this gigantic apply procedural texture button. So yes, of course, click this and check it out. We have a little bit of cliff showing on the really steep edges, and everything else is just covered with snow. Now, there is a warning with this Apply Procedural Texture button. This is also kind of like the big shiny red button that you 
don't want to push in certain circumstances. If you, that's absolutely right. If you have been uh, hand painting a lot of your textures, this erases all of the work that you've done and replaces it all with just procedural textures. So oh. be really careful about that. Now, we, can, we do need to make some changes here because I'd like to see a lot more of this cliff face showing up. And to change that, we need to come up here to the top where we see texture slope. This controls how we go from our cliff texture to the combination of all of our elevation textures. Right now, we only have one elevation texture being just our snow layer. But as I mentioned previously, if we wanted to, we could have like a, a sandy beach layer, and then at a higher elevation, we move over to grass. At a higher ele elevation, we move over to, you know, like brambles and like a forest floor, and then higher above that, move to rocks, and above that, move to snow. We have up to five layers that we can stack if we want a whole lot of different elevation variation in our levels. However, uh, what this controls up here at the top is the blend between the overall cliff texture and those five levels. So our cliff start is going to our cliffs are basically going to begin at an angle of 60 uh, 60 degrees and it'll be completely cliff at 75 degrees and beyond. In between 60 degrees and 75 degrees, we get a blend. So, just as an example, I can change these numerically by typing in values here or I can move these flags which are like adjusting a gradient and you'll see the cliff start and end numbers updating. So just to show you kind of how this works, we could say the cliff starts at a really low angle, like uh, in this case, 14 degrees. And by 24 degrees, it's completely cliff. And now, if I apply again, we get a whole lot more cliff and a whole lot less snow. So it's almost like watching the snow melt, in a way. <laughs> now, the idea here is just tweak until you get something you like. So let's pull this to about halfway. I'm going to keep it pretty snug and apply. And that's starting to look kind of nice. But if you want a little more blending, if you don't want it to be so harsh between the cliff and the snow, then just separate these out a little more, and you get a lot more blend. And that's starting to look kind of good. Mm -hmm. So we can just kind of, you know, rotate around. And don't ever, for any reason, think that this is the be-all, end-all. This is not how your textures have to look when you're done. This can just be a starting point. In fact, that's how we're going to treat it. We're going to use this as a base upon which to create... Uh, the final texture look for our level. So all you're really going to do here is take a moment, play with the slopes until you get to something that you like. I mean, maybe we'll take our cliff end and pull it back a little further and then hit apply just so that things look a little bit more iced over. We're kind of blending a little bit more into that snow and we're not ex we're not exposing so much bare rock. But I'm going to bleed it back down a little bit. So right now I've got 34 and 65. And that's pretty good. I'm going to smack my hand and make myself quit tweaking now, <laughs> and we'll just leave it like that. But that's all I wanted to point out here in this video. Now, I am not going into the various texture height areas. You'd need more textures to do that. Right. Since we're only using cliff and snow, we don't need different elevations. Uh, but that is something that will be explored in the Terrain Toolkit videos, which right. are a part of the Fundamentals series. So if you're curious about how all that works, you can jump right to those videos and then come back here. However... Uh, this discussion has already covered everything I want it to. So it's something you want to throw in, Lee? Yeah, uh, a little sidebar. For those of you who have used the Terrain Toolkit or have seen it in operation previous to Unity 3.0, it used to look a little bit different than it does now. Um, I believe it's just because this was written with the old Unity in mind, it has broken. It, it's still functional, but the look of it, as you were pointing out, you weren't happy with it. Right. In the old version of Unity 2.6, you actually got a little preview patch for uh, all six of the textures, the five layer textures plus the cliff. And that has been uh, is broken in 3.0 right now. Well, that's actually really good to know because if, uh, if for some reason between now, when we're recording this video, when you get to watch it, things do look a little bit nicer and you're thinking that things are just messed up on my end, well, it's probably because they are because at that point, I will have been using a slightly dated version of the script. However, at this time, the individual textures beyond the cliff texture don't have their own preview. So just something to know. And thank you for pointing that out. I think, though, that's going to wrap things up for this video. So we'll catch you in the next video where we will take some time and actually paint on some additional texture.